Hey Alex, it's Tim Leong here from ICU. Have you got a minute? Yeah, I just need to quickly tell you about this patient we've brought down from a met call from the ward. He's the guy with necrotizing fasciitis, surfer, been in for a couple of weeks. And look, he's just had a met call for uh, severe respiratory distress and profound desaturation. Uh, we've had to actually bring him down to ICU uh, with a bag and mask. Now, at the same time, he's profoundly hypotensive. We've had to start some peripheral noradrenaline and um, uh, I gather from the lab that we've got gram-positive cocci in blood cultures taken uh, earlier today. So I guess looking at him at the moment, plus a fever of 39 degrees, it looks as though it's all very consistent with uh, overwhelming sepsis. Now we've started broad-spectrum antibiotics, which hopefully should cover uh, everything, including the gram-positive cocci. And um, I think we need to think next where the source of infection might be. Hi, I'm Alan Cheng from uh, the Infectious Diseases Unit at Alfred Health. I'm an Infectious Diseases Physician uh, working with the Infection Prevention Unit. Infections in hospital are a major public health problem. Um, it's estimated that between 5 and 10 percent of patients in Australia uh, get an infection that they didn't come in with. A major factor associated with a lot of um, hospital acquired infections is invasive devices. And by this, I don't just mean um, prosthetic devices um, like orthopedic implants and cardiac valves, um, but also relatively minor um, uh, invasive devices like um, urinary catheters, intravenous lines and central lines. These can get infected at, a, at different times, but an important time um, in trying to prevent these infections is when they're first placed at the time of insertion. And the elements of uh, prevention are good aseptic technique and hand hygiene. Contamination of a patient or their immediate surrounding environment with potentially disease-causing microorganisms is often an invisible process. For this reason, clinicians need to be aware of how their actions can influence the risk to patients during clinical procedures. Aseptic technique is an umbrella term that encompasses the infection prevention precautions taken during all clinical procedures to protect the patient. We know that healthcare-associated infections can be directly linked to breaches in aseptic technique, which is why it is so important that we get this right.
Hi Thelma. Hi Chrissy. I've just got your antibiotics. Hi. Now can you show me your wristband and date of birth? Yep. Can you tell me your name? Yes, Thelma Trailer, 27 to 1245. That's great. And are you allergic to anything? Just morphine. Just morphine. Okay, that's what I've got written down to. Okay. I want you to tell me if this hurts as I'm doing it, just to okay. see how the drip is. Allied health staff also need to perform invasive procedures, breaching the patient's natural defences. This increases the risk of introducing pathogens, which can have a significant consequence for the patient. A meticulous approach to aseptic technique, including hand hygiene, must be observed with every procedure.
clinical staff who perform any clinical procedure that breaches a patient's natural defences must be familiar with these principles of aseptic technique. This practice must therefore be applied from the most complex of surgical cases to dressing an uncomplicated wound. Any breach of aseptic technique compromises patient safety and must be rectified to ensure safe, standardised and quality care by everyone. made a really great recovery. Um, mobility looks good. Just remember to keep up with your rehab exercises. Um, this is just to say thank you to you and everyone here. Oh, great, thank you very much. All the best with everything. Thank you very much. No problems, James. See you later. Take care.